Aaron McPike from the Independent Journal Review and conservative commentator Angela Morbido. You know, Angela, as if we need the reminders, history is defined by those events we didn't see coming. So if the consensus sees a Republican landslide defeat coming, at the very least, we should question it, shouldn't we? Absolutely. You look at the research on what happens to the president's party in midterm elections. And on average, since World War II, the president's party has lost 25 seats in the House. But I cannot point to anything since the day Donald Trump was elected president of the United States that has gone down in an average way. Polling is broken and what we expect, you know, our expectations aren't really worth that much anymore. It's so much harder to predict. Yeah, and I know there are a lot of variables here, a lot of very powerful Republican incumbents who aren't running again. They can't recruit similarly big names to run for their seats. So it does feed this narrative, Aaron, that the grand old party is in a grand old pickle. Do you agree? I, I do uh, agree with that. And, you know, Neil, I would tell you, we talked on the day of the Virginia governor's election when I thought that Ed Gillespie actually might eke out a victory in that race. And boy, was I wrong since he lost by almost 10 points. But you know by what way, I have Aaron, heard? That's a big problem with you. You're, you readily concede when you're wrong. Don't do I, that. Well, I'm not often wrong, but on no, that one, on, on that one, I was, and I will admit it. But look, since Election Day, I have heard from a number of professional Republicans, and that is people who work in the District of Columbia right. and make their money off of advancing the Republican Party and who live in Virginia, who have told me that they voted for Ralph Northam, the Democrat who won, and not their friend, Ed Gillespie, who they have worked for before or worked with before because they wanted to send a message to Donald Trump. And if professional Republicans wanted to do that in the 2017 election, I would have to assume that a number of independent voters, even light Republican leaning voters in a number of suburban districts around the country, probably want to do the same thing in 2018. That's interesting, but Angela, I'll flip it around and say a wild card development here is the tax cut. And while I have a lot of reservations about the tax cut, it apparently proves so large for corporations, for example, that they're doing more than just benefiting their shareholders. They're sharing the loot, 150 of them now, benefiting upwards of two and a half million Americans in terms of higher bonuses, lower insurance related health care costs, uh, even, you know, utility customers that we didn't quite grasp the magnitude beyond the personal cut and how the business cut could come back to individuals. And that will be appreciated later in the year. I, I don't know if that's the case, but I, I think that is an underappreciated element. What do you think? Without question, you have a whole slew of companies who are giving their employees bonuses and raises because they are able to, thanks to the GOP tax cut package. And even if your company isn't one of those for anybody watching, you're still probably taking home more of the money that you earn when you go to work. The GOP effectively gave everybody a raise with this tax bill, and not a single Democrat voted to make that happen. If the Republican Party reminds voters of that very simple fact, every day until midterm elections in November, it's going to be the Democrats who have to throw the Hail Mary well, pass but, but this Republicans, time. Republicans, I got to tell you, uh, when it comes to explaining this tax package and just simplifying it the, the Ronald Reagan way, I think you should get more of your money, not the government, and leave it at that. They get into the weeds and get too incredibly uh, detailed about it. So, Aaron, failing that, people are going to have to see it for themselves. They're going to see it in their checks. They're going to have to see it in these bonuses. They're going to have to see more companies sharing the loot. And then it could make a difference. Without that, I don't know about Republicans selling it. What do you think? Yeah, yeah but I want to talk about 2006 for just a minute, because remember that 2006 was before the Great Recession, and the Democrats won they won the House, they won the Senate in 2006, and they won it because they campaigned against the Republicans and what they said was the culture of corruption and opposition to the war in Iraq. So those were two things that really didn't have anything to do with the economy. I mean, you know, obviously, they do have things to do with the economy, but it wasn't about the economy and about pocketbook issues. And the Democrats still won. So, yes, the Republicans can try to campaign on this on this tax bill and on these tax cuts, but they had a disastrous year of governing and just got that tax package through at the very end all after I'm saying, a miserable all I'm year. All is I think, and believe me, I had a lot of problems with the tax 
cut package, the magnitude of it and the spillover effect is more substantial than I think people appreciate. Could be early, but we'll see. Thank you both. Thank you. I left you speechless. Well, as speechless as me. <laughs>